What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com back with another episode. I think we're on video four of my disc bulge, disc injury series. Today we're talking about back exercises. If you have a disc bulge, you've been diagnosed with one, um, you're just convinced that you have one, or you have any kind of history, honestly, herniations, anything like that, and you're looking to find safer ways to train the back. This video is specifically for you. If you're new here, make sure you hit like, smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the videos coming out down the line. And also, if you're a part of this series and you haven't gotten it yet, you must get this free guide that I've made just for this series. I break down all of my thoughts, all of my best practices when it comes to exercising safely, strategically, and smarter when it comes to disc bulges and herniations. So you can grab that at www.fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. If you're looking for the other videos in this series, they'll pop up throughout this video. You can always go to the playlist um, that we have here that this video is connected to. And if you don't know who I am, my name is William. I run fitnessforbackpain.com where I teach you how to overcome persistent chronic low back pain by mastering your mindset, improving your movements, and building smarter strength. So if that is you, if you're looking to find better, safer, smarter ways of building strength and getting out of pain, you don't want to miss anything that comes out on this channel. All right, so the first exercise I wanna show you when it comes to training the back smarter, safer, especially with a disc bulge, is supported rows. Now there's lots of different ways you can do supported rows. There's the dumbbell way, there's bands, you can do cables, you can do barbells. There's lots of different ways, but assuming you're at home, you have a basic home gym where you do have access to a commercial gym, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ones and I'll give you some other options as well. So the basic dumbbell bend over supported row is going to be obviously using a bench here. What I like to do is either I'm keeping both of my legs straight on the bench like this, or I'll keep one straight and I'll bend the other just for extra stability. Why I like this straight leg is because oftentimes if you're sitting like this and you're trying to do something like this, then your low back is kind of exposed. It's in that flex position. Disc bulges, herniations, we're trying to stay away from that, especially if you're super sensitive. So instead, grab a bench, grab your weight here, have one leg straight here, get the weight, bring your shoulder blades back and down, and you're simply just gonna do a standard dumbbell row. Focusing on going nice and slow. You're not <clears throat> doing this kind of thing. Nice and slow, control all the way up. Pull, 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 pull. Squeeze as high as you can go without momentum. Come down nice and slow. Always think about quality over just getting the reps done. Squeeze and back down. Again, keep your legs, both legs straight like this or you can do one bent, one straight, but I highly suggest you try this leg position out. So the second variation of back exercises that you can do is again, using another support feature. I'm using a bench. If you're at a commercial gym, benches are everywhere. You can just grab one, do it like this. If you're at home, I would highly suggest you kind of figure out, maybe be a little bit creative on what you have available to you. But ultimately we're going with the supported variation. Now the first exercise was predominantly upper mid back. This is gonna be lats, okay? We're gonna really hit the lats mid back as well, but we're gonna focus more in this position. I'll show you how it works. So when you're doing this with the supported, there's two variations I wanna show you how to do. One way is again, you have the bench supported. You can have your legs straight out again like this. I love this position here being kind of in this staggered position right here. Then I can take this free arm and I'm gonna grab the bench or grab whatever I'm on for, for some added stability. Then I'll reach up and grab it. Now I've got a cable system here. You might not have that, that's totally fine. You can attach your band to whatever you have on the wall or in your house. Uh, I have a cable system. I used bands for years and years and years before. I had this, so don't sweat it if you don't have a system like this at your house. If you're, at a, if you're at a commercial gym, do it. If you're at home, bands work just fine. What I'll do is I'll grab, we're doing single arm work now. I'll grab this, sit back, get into position here, have one leg bent, grab this hand across the bench or whatever I'm on, I'm gonna grab this for some stability. I'm gonna grab my mic so I don't mess the sound up. But I'm gonna reach out and I'm just gonna pull down just like a standard lat pull down. Nice and stable, nice and slow. My focus is more on squeezing. When I come down, pull, 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 pull. 
I'm squeezing that lat and really trying to get again a quality rep over just kind of like trying to just yank them out like this. Nice and slow, add some weight if you have to. Keep it nice and neutral, relax, brace the stomach even though you're being supported here, brace it. The second variation is on a flat bench. I'll drop this down, I'll move my cable system or your band system, whatever you have, and I will get into a position here. Grab my band, reach out for it, whatever you gotta do, just get it in your hand, get a buddy to hand it to you. From here, same idea, get comfortable. Rest of my head, I'm either grabbing this bench like this and or I'm gonna bend this right leg or left leg, get the other one straight here, pulling and I'm squeezing that lat. So I'm using like this hug technique where I'm squeezing the bench, creating that stability. So as soon as I start pulling, I don't cramp my lower back up. I'm trying to focus on my brace and my stability and my structure during the exercise. So I can just kind of chill and just relax my lower back and not try to over contract or over protect and just allow the band or the cable, or whatever you're using to put the work in. All right, so another great exercise is using a box. You can use a chair, table, bench, whatever you have at your house and something to pull up on. Great for commercial gyms and at home gyms. No matter where you are, you might have to be creative, but this is super easy and all you need is your body weight, unless you wanna make it harder and you can stack some weight up. So essentially what I'm gonna do is a lot of times people have issues with normal pull-ups. Could be for a lot of reasons, but one variation or alternative you can try is the kind of the foot up on box pull-up or foot supported pull-up, whatever you wanna call them. What you do is get the box positioned close enough to you that when you relax and you'll kind of see me swing, you wanna find that, that middle area so you can just, just hang pretty much. So I'll be here, get my arms ready, normal pull-up position, put my feet up. If I was too far out this way, if I relax, my feet go straight. So you wanna kind of be able to hang straight down and then brace. Get yourself in a good neutral position as best you can. From here, you're gonna do a standard pull-up. Up and down. Up. So the angle is gonna be a little bit different, but the torque and the tension on the lower back should feel more relaxed. And you're kind of pivoting on these feet. So you, once you get into that comfortable hanging position so you can relax, brace that, and then pivot on your heels and pull up. And again, you can adjust and play around with the angle where your feet are at. If you can only just do one foot here, you can use that left foot to help. If you're super new at these and you can't do a single pull up yet, bring one foot down, but if not, crank it out here, make it harder. You can hang weight from your hips and you'll be good to go. All right, so this last one is can be a doozy. So you gotta be careful with this. Um, proceed with caution, be careful. This is a kind of overall posterior chain exercise. A lot of people are afraid of the RDLs, the deadlifts, um, and they have good reason to be scared, especially if you have a disc bulge or herniation or something like that. But I wanna show you an example that you can kind of work up on a lot of like when you're rehabbing an issue when it comes to the lower back. This is one of the exercises eventually you'd like to be able to start playing with to get back to doing more heavier, more complex exercises like the traditional RDL or just any kind of deadlift that you like to do. So this one is a single leg up against a wall. It's a rear foot supported, rear foot elevated RDL, whatever you wanna call it. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm using this wall as stability so I can focus less on like trying to balance and focus more on what's going on here in my trunk. What am I feeling down my leg? Am I in a good position? Does this hurt? Should I keep going or should I not? That's what you should be thinking about, not like, whoa, trying to keep your stuff together. So essentially without weight, what you're gonna do is one leg up. You can kind of play around with how high your foot is as long as you feel balanced. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna think about first getting this locked in, nice and braced, ribs down, lats are engaged, and you're going to hinge and almost like you're trying to take your butt and push it back towards that wall. Push, 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 push. And you'll start to feel this pull all down this area here. From here, go to a place where you feel comfortable and you're gonna squeeze all what you're feeling being stretched here. You're gonna squeeze it and come back up to the top. Don't overextend. 
Just squeeze, come back to the top, keep that contraction, keeping this nice and organized, and then going back. So before you grab weight, what I suggest you do is just kind of take your hands, make sure everything's nice and neutral, and just practice the movement. Here, back up. Here, back up. Then, when you're feeling froggy, you can switch it or grab your weight. Same idea here. Nice and neutral position, feel good. Coming down, squeeze them back up. I wouldn't worry too much about how deep you go. If you go too far down and you're not really used to it or comfortable yet, might not be a good fit for you, but just try that out. And if you wanna get back to doing that hip hinging technique, building strength in the entire posterior chain, do the single leg rear foot supported RDLs. They're great. You can start small, go no weight, and build yourself back up from there. Don't be afraid of this exercise. Just be careful. Be cautious, go light, and practice, practice, practice. So what do you think? Those are the four exercises that I enjoy doing. I think they are safe for you. If you attempt them slowly, attempt them with lighter weight, maybe just body weight at first, just to kind of get used to different kinds of positions and what's gonna work best for you. The goal and the whole point of training around a disc bulge and finding smarter ways of building strength despite your situation is always understanding where your threshold is at. No pain, no gain is garbage, okay? You have to get away from that thought process and think more about where's my threshold at and is my exercise pushing through that threshold and creating more pain and more issues or is it going to that threshold and then coming back down and you're staying under that threshold? That is the secret to success with these exercises, all right? So let me know if you, there's another back exercise that you like, if you have a disc bulge or herniation and you're like, you know what, he's missing this one. It's my favorite one. Drop a comment below. Let me know if you like this video, you wanna see more like it. Any suggestions or questions you have, let me know. And of course, if you've not gotten it yet, make sure you grab that free guide. It's paramount to this entire series. If you're watching this series and you don't have the PDF, I don't know what to tell you, but go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training, pick it up, it's free. Just let me know what email you want me to send it to and it's yours forever. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you on the next episode.